a leper approached our Lord, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. It was on this gospel passage that a few months ago this year, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, delivered a memorable homily using this incident which happened in a gospel as an illustration, as an example of God's infinite mercy. We won't reproduce the Holy Father's whole homily here, just one thought. How is it that the leper being cleansed by our Lord teaches us God's mercy? Well, it's evident. It's evident. According to the Mosaic law, this leper shouldn't have even approached Jesus, but he did. He did. And our Lord, according to Mosaic law, shouldn't have let him come near. He shouldn't have allowed the leper to approach, shouldn't have had anything to do with him. But he did. Our Lord came not to abolish, but to fulfill the law. What did that law have in mind? The fact that lepers were separated from the rest of the people says not to contaminate them with their leprosy, which was incurable and a terrible disease. Our Lord came not to abolish, but to fulfill. What happens? He allows the leper to approach, but our Lord does not contract his sickness. He did not become a leper like him. He didn't tell him, well, your leprosy in the end, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's actually, it's actually good. I'm going to become a leper myself. No. Our Lord recognized that that leprosy was evil, did not come from God. And he did not remain indifferent. He did not remain indifferent before the leper who suffered greatly. In fact, he cured him. He completely eliminated, eradicated, cleansed his body of that leprosy which was ravaging him, leading him to his grave. This teaches us God's mercy because God meets us truly where we're at, no matter how low we might be. But he doesn't meet us where we're at to stay where we're at. He doesn't meet us where we're at to uh, tell us that our mediocrity is okay. He doesn't uh, uh, meet us where we're at to tell us, well, you're doing good enough. You're a good guy the way you are. He doesn't meet us where we're at to become sinful like us. And it's not to leave us where we're at. That would actually be cruel, not merciful. It's not to leave us in our sins, but it's to make us become like him, to cleanse us and to elevate us to where he's at. So our Lord meets us where we're at, low or very low, and that's true. But it's not to leave us where we're at, but to elevate us to where he's at, to sanctity. And we say this because the year of mercy is approaching, and we need to reflect on the spiritual fruits that this year of mercy will offer to us and to all of us. We all need conversion and mercy. And in fact, those who have sinned, who have fallen in the mud, so to speak, need God's mercy and need to thank him for his mercy because he pulls us out of the mud. Those who haven't fallen need to thank God all the same because he prevented us from falling. So we all need to thank God and to ask God for his mercy. But mercy unavoidably requires a change of life. What kind of a change of life? It requires a conformity to Christ. It requires continually making ourselves more Christ-like. It continually requires us to make ourselves more like Christ. Because to allow, to allow someone to remain in his sins, whether big or small, is not mercy. That's actually quite cruel. It's actually quite cruel. And we're, uh, as the year of mercy approaches, some interpretations that are being given are are ones that say precisely that. Mercy and God's commandments are incompatible. Therefore, what will this year of mercy bring? Well, our Lord will allow us to stay in our sins. Well, that's not, that's not at all merciful. That's quite cruel. And our God is not a cruel God. He's a merciful God. And the commandments and mercy are not incompatible. It's, in fact, God's mercy that makes the observance of the commandments possible. And it makes us noble. It makes us like God. It really makes us live fully our being in the image and likeness of God himself. And God requires of us a change of life naturally. It requires of us to change our lives, to make them more like Christ. But God in his mercy, though he calls us to a change of life, sometimes painful, he makes it possible. He requires of us a change of life, but he makes it possible and he's there with us every step of the way. And this, this truly is God's mercy. Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. The leper wanted to be made clean. Our Lord wanted to make him clean. And like that, he was made clean. Neither did our Lord become a leper, nor did he leave the leper in his sins. No, the leper wanted to be cleansed. Our Lord wanted to cleanse him, and he was 
cleansed, and his leprosy was left him immediately. And we all need this mercy, okay? So we all have to remember that we need this mercy. Why? Well, conversion, sanctification is multiple steps. We can reduce them to three, and with this thought we'll conclude. For most of us, conversion, few are the blessed souls that maybe after baptism never lost their innocence. For most of us, conversion first requires going from bad to good, from sin to grace. It's unfortunately a necessary step, but it can't end there. We need God's mercy to go from good to better. We can't just say, well, I'm doing pretty good. I hope I'm not going to go to hell. I'm going to stop there. No, our Lord doesn't leave us there either. If they go from good to better, and if we're doing in our lives, if we're already choosing what's better over what's simply good, it's still not good enough. We have to choose to go from better to best if you want to truly be like Christ. And each of these steps requires a change of life. But God's mercy, but God's mercy makes each of these steps possible. If we will it, if we wish to, uh, if, we, if you are willing to collaborate with God's mercy, which meets us where we're at, but it's never to leave us where we're at in our sins and our mediocrity and our misery, but to elevate, elevate us to where our Lord is at, to where God is at, and that is to sanctity of life, to complete conformity to our Lord. Praised be Jesus and Mary. <clears throat>